Happy 4th of July, if you're watching this today. Um, I've been meaning to make this video for a long time, but uh, I've only had some time today where I'm alone and, and uh, can, can make a video. Uh, so I just wanted to share some, some of the thoughts of my heart, share some experiences with you. Um, but to preface this, I just want to say that um, I have always wanted to serve the Lord. I do not remember a time that I didn't want to serve the Lord. As a matter of fact, when I was about five or six, uh, I remember speaking in the Spanish-speaking ward. I was a member of a Spanish-speaking ward back then in the, I don't know, in the early 70s. And I remember getting up on the pulpit and, uh, and telling the congregation that I wanted to serve the Lord. I, I knew that I was going to be a missionary. I remember my mom telling me that she could barely see my, my head poking over the pulpit, but, uh, but uh, the congregation was very uh, clearly able to hear me <laughs> get up and share my testimony as, as young as I was back then. But the point of this video is to answer a question that I have heard people in various circles ask uh, have miracles ceased? Where are all the miracles? Um, especially people in, in, who are members of my, my faith and my church, my religion, uh, Latter-day Saints. Uh, people say or ask, where are the miracles? Why don't we see great signs and wonders? And Well, this, this stems from a scripture in the Book of Mormon uh, in Moroni chapter 7. I'm going to read that real quick. In Moroni chapter 7, verse 26, we read, And as surely as Christ liveth, he spake these words unto our Father, saying, Whatsoever thing ye shall ask the Father in my name, which is good, in faith, believing that ye shall receive, behold, it shall be done unto you. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, have miracles ceased, because Christ hath ascended into heaven, and hath sat down on the right hand of God, to claim the Father, claim of the Father his rights of mercy, which he hath upon the children of men? For he hath answered the ends of the law, and he claimeth all those who have faith in him. And they who have faith in him will cleave unto every good thing. Wherefore, he advocateth the cause of the children of men, and he dwelleth eternally in the heavens." And because he hath done this, my beloved brethren, have miracles ceased? Behold, I say unto you, Nay, neither have angels ce ceased to minister unto the children of men. For behold, they are subject unto him to minister according to the word of his command, showing themselves unto them of strong faith and a firm mind in every form of godliness. Or have angels ceased to appear unto the children of men? Or has he withheld the power of the Holy Ghost from them? Or will he, so long as time shall last? Or the earth shall stand? Or there shall be one man upon the face thereof to be saved? Behold, I say unto you, Nay, for it is by faith that miracles are wrought, and it is by faith that angels appear and minister unto men. Wherefore, if these things have ceased, woe be unto the children of men, for it is because of unbelief, and all is vain." He goes on to say, it is as if no redemption has been made. Um, you can find these verses in Moroni chapter 7. But what is redemption? What does that mean? Well, scripturally speaking, redemption, to redeem means to, uh, to gain or to, to regain possession of something um, in exchange for payment. And that's exactly what Jesus Christ did. He paid a very heavy price in order to gain us. Uh, and if you read Ether chapter 3 in the Book of Mormon, Jesus Christ defines redemption when he brings the brother of Jared back into his presence. The brother of Jared had faith no longer. It had turned into knowledge. So Jesus Christ gains us when, when he brings us back into his presence. Thus, he redeems us. Um, so, have miracles ceased? And if people are out there 
losing faith, losing hope. And it's written in the scriptures that in the last days, men's hearts will fail them. Well, maybe some of my experiences uh, might help to, to bolster your faith and to go, to go out and seek the Lord and experience your own miracles. Um, I was about 11 years old. I remember I was about 10 or 11 years old, and I was in the church parking lot. I was, I was being, uh, I don't know, I was being rambunctious. I was always a very rambunctious kid. And I remember uh, shimmying up a, a parking lot uh, light pole. It was, it was about a foot or two away from the church building. And I, I just had this bright idea to start climbing it, see how high I could get. Well, I, I went up about five or six feet. And I had a powerful feeling. I received a very powerful prompting uh, to get down. And so I, I listened to that prompting and I got down. And as soon as, as, soon as uh, I took my first step away from the pole, I heard a loud and heavy thud behind me. And when I turned around and looked at my heel, there was this um, large, I mean, back in the 70s, stadium light poles the, the 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 lights they were they were encased in big steel casings the big big housing um had i not listened to that prompting i would i wouldn't be here to make this video uh it would have crushed my skull and they would have found me <laughs> they would have found me dead in the, in the parking lot that day um looking back i know that that prompting you know, uh, i can easily recognize it as as uh, prompting from from the Lord, um, and that is one instance where the, where the Lord has been in my life uh, often. Uh, another example: I was, uh, oh gosh, I was about 20 years old in, as a young missionary in Kaufbeuern, Germany, uh, and I was at the train station with my companion, my missionary companion, and we had just bought our tickets to go to another city. And we had walked out onto the platform to wait for the train. And I had a very distinct impression. By this time, I, 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 I was able to realize that, that uh, well, when the, Lord, when the Lord whispers to you to do something, you, you listen. You don't, you don't always know why, but that's the way the Spirit works. Um, just like the wind, the wind listeth where it will, and... Uh, we, we don't recognize it. We, we, can, we can see the breeze. We might be able to see the, the leaves in the breeze, but we don't know where it comes from or where it's going, but we can see its effects. And that's the way the Spirit is, and that's the way the Spirit works. You don't really see things until the, until the after effect. And that's the way the, and that was the case here. I didn't know why I needed to stand in this particular spot on the platform to wait for the train, but I remember being directed to stand on a very specific spot on the platform just a few feet away from from the edge and so I planted my feet firmly and I, we, I just stood there waiting for the train that's what you do my companion walked behind me and then naturally he stood right next to me and so we stood shoulder to shoulder waiting for the train to come and it finally came and uh, well if you if you've ever had trains come by you they come with such force I mean you can feel you can feel the the, the the wind, the, the, you just feel it. You can feel it hit you, the air. Just is. So it's, it's slowing down and it's still, it's still coming in really fast. I mean, there were probably 20, 20 cars at least. And as it's slowing down, a girl behind us, she passed out and slumped forward between my companion and I. And had we not been standing at that exact spot, she would have she would have fallen forward and oh she would have been hit by the train and killed uh and just to think about that makes me shudder so it was then that i realized why i had that very powerful uh prompting to stand right there because of that um a young girl's life was saved so that's another example uh 
on May the 6th, 2008, I was, uh, I was working in my garage. I was working on sprinklers, doing some repairs, and also cleaning out the garage in the house that I was living at the time in, in Perry, Utah. And uh, I remember as I was working, I, I heard a fluttering above me, and it startled me. And I looked up, and I saw a little hummingbird. And it was just f hovering and flying around back and forth on the ceiling. Um, and, and it was trying to find its way out. And it couldn't. Now my garage had, I remember it had 12 foot ceiling. And uh, the garage door was only about 7 or 8 feet. The garage door was only about 7 or 8 feet tall. And so when the garage door opens, you have this gap between the door and the ceiling. It's about 4 or 5 foot space just dead space and so the hummingbird was just flying around back and forth in there and it couldn't figure out how to get back out and it was hot it was a hot summer day and nothing survives in my garage overnight it's so hot the next day insects or bugs or birds or whatever whatever ends up trapped in my garage is found dead on the windsill they're they're attracted to the sunlight and that's where they that's where they stay and i did not want this fate for this little hummingbird so I, I grabbed this <laughs> I grabbed a snow shovel and I thought maybe I could just kind of guide it and coax it out and so I did I did that and I spent I spent some time trying to trying to guide it out but all I ended up doing was just scaring it more it didn't help at all I couldn't think of what else to do and I thought the only way the only way that I could uh, save this little hummingbird was to take it in my hand walk outside uh, the garage and and then just let it go and so and so I prayed and I asked God let me save this little hummingbird that's the only way I could the only way I could save it is to is to take it in my hand and as soon as I prayed the little hummingbird stopped hovering and landed on the on the wires of the uh, of the garage door motor above the above the car that was parked in my garage and I thought oh okay wow oh, okay this is my chance so I crawled up on the hood of the car and slowly made my way up to the roof of the car and I, I I just started reaching for the little hummingbird and I was able to wrap my hand around its little body and I gently started bringing it down but it wouldn't let go of the wire so I had to I had to uh, peel back its little feet, and I did did it as carefully as I could, and then I crawled back down to the to to the ground, walked out of the garage, and I and I looked at this little hummingbird. And it was such a beautiful, beautiful little bird. I'll never forget how how green the, the iridescent green colors of the feathers they were just so beautiful, and, and I admired it, but I didn't want it to be any more uh, scared, so I let it go. And I watched it fly, fly up into the woods. I'll never forget that experience. Uh, that, that, there's more to that story. And it's very meaningful to me. Um, but that's another example uh, of the Lord answering our prayers uh, when we ask in faith. Uh, Trying to think of another time. Uh, It was about 2012, I think, about four, about four years later. Um, about four years later, uh, I had a, I had a dream. The Lord had given me a, a, a vision of an end time scenario, and uh, I, I won't go into the details because it was meant just for me, and and it wouldn't, it wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't help anybody to share this. Uh, so anyway, um, I just, I do remember how vivid the details were and just how vivid the colors, everything around me, just the, the, the environment, the surrounding, everything was so vivid. It felt like I was there, and, but anyway, uh, the dream ended and I woke up, it was the middle of the night or early in the morning and I thought, oh, well, that was, that was quite the dream. Uh, it was very, it felt very real. And so I just went back to sleep. And as soon as I fell back asleep, um, 
I, I experienced the same vision. I saw everything in the exact same detail, uh, just same vivid colors, same sequence of events, everything. And I just, I just stood there just, wow. And the Lord added an extra scene to that vision. And then my, my dream ended and I woke up in the morning and, and I wrote it down. I remember, I, I remember I, I needed to write it down. And so, and so, yeah, that was, that was my first experience with the, uh, with the vision. Uh, in 2015, um, my wife and I, we moved in with her elderly parents to take care of them. Um, she is going to turn, her mom is turning 89, 89 this month. And her dad is 91 going on 92. So, so they need a lot of help. And so, uh, we take care of them. Um, I do, I do everything around the house, all the handyman work. I fix everything, repair, do all the, all the lawn maintenance, everything. I, I just take care of everything for them. And so that's what we do. It's a labor of love. And a year after we had moved in, um, uh, my, my wife, uh, she found out that she had, con uh, developed degenerative disc disease and she had to quit work and she wasn't able to do anything, much, much of anything. She had become bedridden, and I can't remember how many months uh, she was bedridden. And after many doctor's visits, and and uh, oh man, I can't remember all the all the all the things that we went through to try and get get her spine fixed up. I remember praying for a long time, asking the Lord if He would let me heal her. I, I had no doubt that that uh, that that he could do this. Uh, there was just no doubt whatsoever. To, and so one morning after uh, after praying before going to work, I don't remember how early it was, but uh, I sat at the edge of the bed and, and I woke my wife up and I told her, "I, I want to heal you." And uh, well, my my dear wife, she says, "Well, I don't know if I've got if I have enough faith to be healed." And I told her. I have enough faith for both of us and, and she said okay so I laid my hands on on her and and uh, I rebuked her her affliction I commanded her 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 body to be whole to become healed her spine uh, with all the nerves everything that was afflicting her her disease and so after after I had uh, done so uh, I went to work and life continued as normal uh well by the end of that day and the next day i could tell that my wife was was walking around i mean she she was able to go up the stairs by herself whereas before she couldn't do that without excruciating pain just getting out of bed was excruciating for her when i took her to the to hospital visits just i i had to drive slowly and carefully avoiding speed bumps and I mean even even the slightest speed bump or pothole would, would would jar her back and send her into into just a lot of pain but but uh, after after this day after I after I laid hands on her she began to walk around and I could tell she was testing testing her uh, she was testing the mobility in her back getting out of the car um, and I could tell that she could, that she felt stronger, that she felt the the affliction go away. It, it wasn't there, and then I could tell she was testing the angles of her spine. That's the best way I could explain it. Anyway, by that weekend, she had, <laughs> by that weekend, uh, she had gone to church with me, and and I had never seen her wear those high heels. They were I don't know three or four inch heels. She usually wears maybe one or two inch heels but yeah she wore she wore high heels to church walked around like like she was never like she was never sick and uh that that evening we had a bad snowstorm and and i went out to shovel snow she came out and and uh, started shoveling snow with me she just she just scooping right along digging and, and throwing digging and throwing and then so I, I i knew that she had finally gained the confidence in 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 that blessing in that healing and so that was another experience that that really that was really very meaningful to me and of course to my wife um,
Well, I'll, I'll leave it at that. I, that I, I have had a, a lot of experiences. That's only, these are only just a few, a few miracles and a few, a few <sighs> incidences of, uh, that's one incidence of, of healing someone. Uh, there are others. There, there, there are many more experiences and more miracles, but uh, maybe I'll save that for another time. I want to read from uh, the Lectures on Faith. In, uh, lecture on, in, in the final lecture, Lecture 7, verse 20. Uh, we read, This is the reason that the fishermen of Galilee could teach the world, because they sought by faith, and by faith obtained. And this is the reason that Paul counted all things but filth and dross. What he formerly called his gain, he called his loss. Yea, he counted all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. Philippians chapter 3 verses 7 through 10. Because to obtain faith by which he could enjoy the knowledge of Christ Jesus the Lord, he had to suffer the loss of all things. This is the reason that the former day saints knew more and understood more of heaven and of heavenly things than all others besides, because this information is the effect of faith to be obtained by no other means. And this is the reason that men, as soon as they lose their faith, run into strifes, contentions, darkness, and difficulties. For the knowledge which tends to life disappears with faith, but returns when faith returns. For when faith comes, it brings its train of attendance with it. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, gifts, wisdom, knowledge, miracles, healings, tongues, interpretation of tongues, etc. All these appear when faith appears on the earth and disappear when it disappears from the earth. For these are the effects of faith and always have and always will attend it. For where faith is, there will the knowledge of God be also, with all things which pertain thereto, revelations, visions, and dreams, as well as every other necessary thing, in order that the possessors of faith may be perfected and obtain salvation. So how do we, how do we develop faith? How do we develop the kind of faith that, that Paul had? that Nephi had, that Moses had, that Joseph Smith had, well, the answer is, the answer is simple. It's, it's by doing what Jesus said to do and to become who he said to become. And, and he told us how in his Sermon on the Mount, and he, he lived it. He showed us how to be a godly person so that we could obtain a godly kingdom, and godly people will obtain a godly kingdom and it's through obedience that's how we show our faith that is that is how we show our fidelity to a God who who loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son to pay a price to gain us all that's what it means to be redeemed and that's what Jesus Christ wants to read wants, wants to do he wants to redeem us he wants to bring us back into his presence we should be Seeking his face daily, uh, strengthening our, our faith in him, and deepening our relationship with him. So, but uh, yeah, we have to get over ourselves first. We have, to, we have to put our worldly desires and vain ambitions and all of the things that come with this world, just, just put them behind us and, uh, and seek Jesus Christ's face. That, that's that's really all all there is to it right there so so that is my my testimony that miracles have not ceased and they won't cease uh, at least not in my life uh, they haven't ceased they continue miracles continue in my life and I expect many more miracles to happen in my life so yeah thanks for watching